Welcome to Electra Online, and now the final of the three types of active galaxies, quasars. And quasars, of course, had an interesting story, especially in how they were discovered. Because when they started with radio telescopes and they began to search the sky for radio, radio radiation, they began to see different spots in the sky where there was a strong radio source. And so, of course, then they called their friends up on the mountains and they say, hey, take your telescope, point the telescope in the same direction and see what you can see. And in some cases, when they did that, they saw a small blue fuzzy patch, looked like a small little blue star. And, uh, well, they said that's kind of strange because blue stars do not put out radio radiation. It did look like a star, it was fuzzy, and so we called them quasars because we didn't know what they were and the word quasar means stellar-like. So they said there's a stellar-like object, we don't think it is a star, but it looks like a blue star that puts out the massive amounts of radio radiation. Of course, massive amounts, they didn't really know how much it was because when they did spectroscopic analysis, meaning when they were looking at it to see how much of a recessional velocity there was on these stars, well, whatever they were looking at didn't seem to make any sense until they began to realize that there was a huge recessional velocity associated with the very large distances. Now, there were two objects that became famous when they first discovered them. One is called 3C273, the other one was called 3C48. And 3C273 has such a, a redshift that it was associated with a velocity of 16% the speed of light, and 3C48 was moving away from us at 37% the speed of light, which meant that the distance to this one was 2100 million light years, 2.1 billion light years, and this one was 4.5 billion light years away. So, all of a sudden they realized how much radiation they were receiving, but these were from objects that were billions of light years away, so they knew that the intensity, because the huge distance, had to be enormous. So they were able to figure out that the intensity of these things, called quasars, was anywhere from 10 to the 38 to 10 to the 42 watts, typically about 10 to the 40th, and if you compare that to the intensity of the Milky Way, which is about uh, 5 times 10 to the 36 watts, I guess I should put watts on there, that means that the intensity of a typical quasar was about 2,000 times the intensity of the entire Milky Way galaxy. And then they began to realize, because of the rate of the fluctuations, that it had to come from a very small region within that galaxy, probably from the center of the galaxy, and then finally they determined that it was associated with a supermassive black hole that was very active. Of course, when we talk about objects that are this far away, that means that we're seeing things the way they were billions of years ago. And sure enough, they began to realize that many of these quasars were at huge distances. And when we started looking at things that were closer by, quasars were not very common. And so they began to realize that quasars were objects, galaxies that were extremely active, that have very active supermassive black holes at the center. And they began to realize that those were things that were primarily happening in the past and that currently there's not a lot of quasars around. And then finally, when we started looking at these with these better telescopes, like the Hubble Space Telescope, we began to realize that, hey, this is always happening when galaxies are colliding. So usually when two galaxies are colliding, there's so much material being offered up to the black holes at the center of these galaxies by stars passing by close, that these galaxies, that these black holes become active, start pulling and tearing stars, stars apart. They pull all that material in. They cause enormous amount of energy to be released through that process. And that's why galaxies, that were more likely to collide back in the past when the universe was much more dense, caused these quasars to exist. And so the story of discovery was very interesting. It took years before they realized what they were dealing with, but ones that were dealing with, they were just absolutely amazed that these were actually sources of energy coming from the center of galaxies, billions of light years away, moving away from us at incredible speeds. And that's the story and the nature of quasars. Is that a wrap for today? Yes. All right.